Up to now, we've only used what are called fixed patterns with the grep command. What I mean by fixed patterns are patterns that consist only of characters such as alphabetic characters or digits. In addition to using fixed patterns, you can also use a special text matching language called regular expressions. Regular expressions allow you to identify position within a pattern as well as a wildcard matching capability. Position is either the starting or the end of a line. The start of a line is identified by a caret. The end of a line is identified by a dollar sign. For example, suppose you wanted to search for people whose last names began with a capital S. You can't simply use a capital S because that will find a capital S anywhere on the line. Instead, if you say caret capital S, that tells Grep that you only want to search for capital S's at the beginning of a line. Remember, enclose your patterns in single quotes so you won't have to worry about shell meta characters. This command line will look for people whose last names begin with capital S in the phone list. And as you see, it finds three lines. The dollar sign matches the end of a line. That means the pattern five dollar sign will search for phone numbers that end in five. And as you see, this command only finds lines whose phone numbers end in a five. In addition to position on a line, you also have wildcard regular expression characters. The first wildcard character I'm going to cover is a single dot. A single dot, when put in a pattern, represents any single character and will match any character on a line. Note this pattern, dot capital S. It will match a two character pattern, the second character of which is a capital S. Note that when I use this pattern in a grep command, we only find one line. Even though we know there are other lines containing a capital S in the phone list file. The reason why I don't find those other lines is because they start with a capital S. Our pattern says we want the second character to be a capital S. Therefore, a capital S must be preceded by some other character. Capital S is at the beginning of a line are not preceded by a character and therefore they do not match the pattern dot capital S. In most cases, single dots are used in combination with other characters. For example, suppose I want to search for phone numbers that begin with a four and end with a two. Now in the previous section, we said that you could do this by piping one grep command to another which you can. You also can do this by using a single pattern that includes dots. Note that a phone number has a very specific format. A number, a dash, and then four numbers. If I want to find a phone number that begins with a four and ends with a two, I simply have to match this pattern. A four, a dash, three dots, and then a two. The dots are exactly matching the three other numbers that I don't know in the phone number. In this case, the dots have been used as placeholders, which, again, is usually what they're used for. Often, a single dot is too general because you know something about the characters you're trying to match. For example, suppose I'm looking for last names that start with a capital S or a capital T. Since I know that I want to match one of two characters, I want to narrow down the characters I'm searching for. I can do this with square brackets. Inside square brackets, you list all the characters you want to search in that position of the pattern. Since I'm looking for people whose last names start with a capital S or a capital T, I want to search for these at the very beginning 
of the line. The pattern would be caret bracket capital S capital T close bracket. This pattern says to find all lines that start with an S or a T. And as you see, it finds those lines containing people whose last names begin with S or T. Remember that square brackets identify a single character and that you match any one of the characters inside the square brackets. As another example, this pattern says to search for lines that end in a 2, 3, 4, or 5. Note the dash in this pattern. That identifies that you want to search for characters 2, 3, 4, or 5. Incidentally, searching for a 2, 3, 4, or 5 at the end of a line means you're looking for phone numbers that end with a 2, 3, 4, or 5. And as you can see, that's what we find when we run this grep command. To show you how to be very specific through the use of regular expression patterns. Let me show you how to be very clear on a phone number that starts with a four and ends with a two. Before, we used single dots to match the characters between the dash and the two at the end of the phone number. The asterisk says match zero or more of the preceding character. The problem is that when the asterisk is used incorrectly, it's meaningless. Consider this pattern, A star. This pattern says match zero or more capital A's. If you think about it, every pattern matches zero or more capital A's because a B has zero A's in it. An X has zero A's in it. As a result, A star matches every line in every file. To be meaningful, you have to put more information in front of the asterisk. If you want to match zero or more of any characters, which is what we're used to the asterisk representing, use the dot regular expression character. Recall that dot matches any character. That means that dot star matches zero or more of any character. Suppose you want to search for people whose last names begin with a capital S and whose first name begins with a capital C. Here's a pattern you can use to find such names. You want to start the line at a capital S. That's caret capital S. You know that the first name starts after a comma in a space. What you don't know is how many characters are between the capital S and the last name ending comma. What you can do is you can say to grep, match zero or more characters that appear here. That's why we have the dot star after the capital S. The comma, the space, and the capital C have to be matched exactly to find the name you're looking for. When you run the command with this pattern, you in fact find the single name in the list whose last name begins with a capital S and whose first name begins with a capital C. Note that we do not find the line that contains St. Clair, even though it contains a capital S and a capital C. And that's because the pattern included a comma and a space in front of the capital C, which the name St. Clair does not match. There are additional regular expression characters that you should be aware of, and they're covered in the text, in the regular expression chapter. In addition, grep is part of a three-filter family that includes two other filters, fgrep and egrep. The egrep command has a little bit more flexibility than the regular grep command. This too is described in the text, and I urge you to read those chapters. I have to tell you about a distinction that is important. 
regular expression characters match patterns inside filters. They look an awful lot like some of the file matching wildcard characters understood by the shell. I want to make a clear distinction between file matching wildcard meta characters, which are understood by the shell, and regular expression characters, which are used to match patterns inside filters. You have to keep these straight because the shell sees meta characters, but should not see regular expression characters. That's why patterns are always inside single quotes. Before we end this section, I want to tell you how the grep command got its name. Before the grep command was written, people used to have to search for patterns in files using an editor. The command they used looked like this. G said, globally search through the text in this file. The forward slashes contained a regular expression, which people were trying to match. The P at the end of the line said, print out those lines that match this regular expression. I guess when it came time to write the command, they decided to call it grep. This marks the end of the section on grep and regular expressions. Please review the notes and also read through the chapters on both grep and regular expressions in the textbook. Then work through the exercises listed in the course notes. It's best that you not continue this tape until you have a very good understanding of how regular expressions work.